Can you imagine what it's gonna look like to have your school gym or cafeteria or auditorium filled with potentially hundreds of unsaved friends and schoolmates? How badly do you want them to know that only Jesus can set them free from the penalty, the power, and the presence of sin? Whether you're a student who's taken on the challenge to lead an outreach week, or you're a lead coach who works with them, or a youth pastor, or even if you're the guest speaker who's gonna come and share a gospel message, this video is for you. We're so excited that you've chosen to do this, and we're so eager to be a part of it with you. And we're here to help you the whole way. We wanted to give you a brief overview of the direction and the content that our Set Free campaign messages are gonna take on. So you can be well aware of what it should look like as you execute this at your school. Now let's take a look at what these three messages are actually gonna look like. So our first Set Free message for day one is entitled Death to Life. The big idea for the first day is only Jesus can set you free from the penalty of sin. Your introduction is gonna be about trying to get students to understand and acknowledge that we know that there's such a thing as right and wrong. You're gonna invite a student up to come and you're gonna ask for their phone and you're gonna take their phone and then tell them to sit down. That's what the speaker will do. Oh, this is gonna create an awkward moment because that student's not gonna know, do I go sit down, do I give my phone up? Because the reality is you can go to any country in the world right now, go up to a stranger, take their phone, their hat, their bike, whatever, and what are they gonna say? They're gonna say, hey, that's mine, right? We all know there's such a thing as right and wrong. So you're gonna set that premise up. And then you're gonna give them a hypothetical situation of imagine you had a friend who did some terrible crime, who stole a car, ran over, killed some people, right? And then we would ask the question, do you think that it's right that your friends suffer the consequences of their actions? And then you'll ask, would you be willing to suffer those consequences for your friend? Would you be willing to spend life in prison for them? And the answer is obviously, of course not, right? And that sets us up for how Jesus does say yes to that. You're gonna look at Romans 3, right? The idea that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You're gonna look at Romans 6, 23. You're gonna say, because of that sin, the wage is death. That's what we have earned for ourselves. So throughout this first message, you're gonna be laying out the gospel continually. You'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 2, 4 and 5, right? Where it says that God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even while we were dead in our sin, Christ, with Christ, we've been made alive. It's by grace that we've been saved through faith. We need to understand that and communicate that to these students, that they cannot earn or work their way out. It is a gracious gift. You look at John chapter 5, where Jesus says, truly all those who follow him have passed from death to life. In Colossians 1.13, we're gonna talk about how Jesus delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And it's in that son and in his work on our behalf that we have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. You're gonna come back then with an illustration drawing back the question of, no, of course you would not take the penalty for your friend, but that's exactly what Jesus does. Jesus steps in, takes the penalty, dies the death that we deserve in order so that we can live the life that only comes through him. Remember, our big idea is that only Jesus can set you free from the penalty of sin. Throughout this entire thing, but especially here at the end, as the speaker, you'll see in the notes that we want the gospel presentation to be clear and that we wanna give people an opportunity to respond to a salvation invitation. We want you to lead our students in a prayer where they can confess their sin and ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of their life, believing in Christ's finished work on the cross on their behalf. And then the most important thing here at the end is that there's gonna be response cards at the end of each day. And we want you to make sure that every student fills one out. Why? So that we can follow up with each and every student. Whether they made a decision or not, whether they have questions or not, doesn't matter. We wanna follow up because that's a huge part of what we do. And our second day of the Set Free campaign is the title, Slaves No More. The big idea for this message is that only Jesus can set you free from the power of sin. We're gonna start off with an illustration asking the students to imagine a box. A box that has them trapped, that has them enslaved, right? You're gonna ask them questions about, are they addicted to their phone? Are, are they addicted to getting attention? Do they feel like they're in bondage, always constantly trying to please their parents, their teachers, their friends, to gain approval? 
You're gonna ask them if they're addicted to substances, whether it be alcohol or nicotine, if they've got issues with pornography. You're gonna ask them if they are under the control of depression or are in bondage to anxiety. These are things that many of our young brothers and sisters are dealing with. So you're gonna ask them, is there something that's got you in bondage? And then you're gonna make the illustration that all of us, all of us are in a box called sin. Jesus tells us that we're in there and that apart from him, there is nothing we can do to set ourselves free from the power of sin. So looking at this message, you're gonna look at John chapter eight and you're gonna look at what Jesus says to his disciples. He says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, what does that mean? What, what do we need to be set free from? The, the hearers of that verse said, well, what do you mean? We've never been slaves to anyone. But again, Jesus makes the point that every time we give in to sin, we make ourselves slaves to sin and only he can set us free from that power. You're going to unpack the gospel as you look at Romans 8, 1 through 4, where you help your friends understand that there is now, there is now, present tense, no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Well, why not? Because Jesus was sent by God to accomplish what the law couldn't. The law was given so that we'd be perfect, we could keep it but we couldn't. So God sends his son to fulfill the righteous requirement of the law so that in him, we can be fully accepted and satisfied of God's expectation that we be perfect. Look at that beautiful passage. You gotta help these students understand that there is now zero condemnation for those who are in Christ. Jesus took it all. There remains no wrath, only acceptance, freedom, and love if you would but follow Jesus Christ as your savior. You'll help these friends, your students, understand what does it mean to be a slave? Well, being a slave means that you're unable to break out of, the, out of the destructive patterns. That you're able to set yourself free from the things that have you in bondage and maybe have you addicted to them for so long. You cannot do it on your own. That is key. You cannot do it on your own. So God, in the very real present tense sense, through sanctification, is currently setting us free from the power of sin and death as we submit to him by the power of the Holy Spirit and put to death the deeds of the body. Again, we want the salvation message and invitation to be very, very clear. Give them an opportunity to confess their sin and to accept Christ's finished work on the cross on their behalf for salvation. And then once more, make sure that they fill out response cards so we can follow up with them appropriately. And the third and final message is entitled Hope of Heaven. The big idea for this one is, again, only Jesus can set you free from the presence of sin. You're gonna open up the message with this introduction, inviting four or five students to come up, and you're gonna have them stand on a line and see how far can they jump, right? No matter how far they jump, whether it's five feet, six feet, what you're gonna to say to them is, hey, that was pretty good, but you felt short. The goal was to jump from here to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> Everyone's gonna go, well, what a silly example. No one can ever do that. And that's exactly the point. You can tell them they have a better chance of jumping from here to France than they do bridging the gap from this life to heaven, apart from Christ. You're gonna jump right into John 3, 16, realizing that only about 50% of our students have ever heard it. So lay it out for them. Help them understand that there's a God who loves them so much that he sent his son so that they would not perish in hell, but spend eternity with him in heaven. What you're wanting to do is set up the reality that for every human, there's two destinations. Whether they want to or not, some of us are gonna end up holy and some of us are gonna end up hot. That's the point of this message, that Jesus is our only hope of heaven. Then what the speaker is gonna do is gonna take him to Revelation 21, where John, the apostle John, has this vision of what the throne room of heaven looks like. And this is what he says. He says, I heard a shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. I will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them and he will wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. These things are gone forever. That's what we want them to understand. I mean, can they even imagine that? No more sorrow, no more suffering, no more pain. Help them understand that through Jesus, there can be an end to every single hard thing in their life. Everything they've ever endured, every trauma, every abuse, every neglect, every suffering, every hardship is done away with. All that remains is inexpressible and unfathomable joy. Invite your lost friends to become a part of the kingdom of heaven. 
You're going to give them an illustration uh, of a famous French type rope walker called Charles Blondin. In 1860, he had this brilliant idea to walk across the Niagara Falls, and there was a huge event. And in fact, he spotted in the crowd the Prince of Wales, Edward Albert. And he walks over to Edward Albert and says, Prince, do you believe that I can walk across Niagara Falls with a man on my back? And the Prince shouts back, I believe that you can do it. Charles then looks at him and says, Prince, will you be that man? What do you think the Prince did? He politely declined. See, we need to help our friends understand that there's a difference between believing that Jesus exists and trusting that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. We need to invite people not just to believe in Jesus, but to trust him, to climb up on his back and allow them to get him across the cavern of their condemnation, their damnation. Jesus is the only way to bridge that gap. That's what we want them to understand. Only Jesus can set our friends free from the presence of sin, and that is a future reality. We want to make sure that the gospel presentation is clear and that the speaker gives them an invitation to trust in Christ. Lead them in a prayer where they can confess their sin and they can ask Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of their life. And then once more, please make sure that everyone fills out a response card so we know where these students are at, we know whether they've entered the kingdom and how we can best follow up with them and serve them. There you have it. Those are the three outreach messages. Only Jesus can set us free from the penalty, the power, and the presence of sin. We are so, so thrilled that you are a part of this amazing mission, that you've taken up the call of Christ to proclaim the gospel to the next generation. Someone has to tell these students, and we're so grateful that you want to be a part of that. Again, whether you're a student leading this outreach or a lead coach or a youth pastor helping them do it, or whether you're the guest speaker coming to share the gospel presentation, thank you for what you're doing. Know that we are praying for you. Know that we are here for you. Know that everything you need to make this outreach successful is in the student leader guide or on our website. Just know that we are here for you. But if I can leave you with one last challenge, this is crucial. You might think that it's up to you to make sure that your non-safe friends meet Jesus, and it's not. I love what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3. He says, what is Apollos and what is Paul? Servants by whom you believed as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but hear this, but God gave the growth. Neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. My friend, you are not called to be fruitful. You are called to be faithful, to preach, to plant, to water, and trust that the Holy Spirit will bring the fruit. Thank you so much for doing this. Trust God, believe in Him, pray, and let the Holy Spirit lead you.